All right, this is an overview of counting and probability. Now, the lesson before this, we did combining probabilities, which included or statements and and statements. Here, we're going to extend that by including the fundamental counting principle, permutations, combinations, and then we'll do some probability towards the end. So let's jump into this. So fundamental definition or the fundamental counting principle simply says if there are m number of items in one category and n number of items in another category, then to find the total number of choices available, you just multiply what we would call, using a definition from earlier, uh, you would just multiply the various sample sizes. Now this principle can be extended to larger data sets. And I'll demonstrate this via an, ex via an example. So suppose you went to a particular restaurant, you had eight choices for an appetizer, 11 choices for a main course, five choices for a dessert. And you wanted to find the number of meal options available. So now notice I've got three distinct categories that have been highlighted. You have a, an appetizer, you have a main course, and you also have a dessert. So what you do is you take the size of each of those categories and you multiply them together. So for instance, you have eight appetizers, 11 main courses, five desserts. Multiply all those numbers together and you end up with 440 meal options. And so that's how you apply the fundamental counting principle. Next, we're going to extend that fundamental counting principle to a word that's called a factorial. And basically what a factorial is, you take a non-negative number or integer, let me say it the right way, and you multiply it by each positive integer that is less than or equal to n. So, a couple notes. We can look at the notation. Notice we have this exclamation point that we use that in mathematics to symbolize factorial, which just simply allows us to expand an expression. Um, and then what's of note is if you have zero factorial, we're going to define that as equal to one. Okay? So, in this example, we have five factorial, which simply means that's five times four times three times two times one. You expand that out. So five times four is 20. Three times two times one is six, which is 120. Now, most calculators, you don't have to do the expansion. So if you've got a Texas instrument, let's say a TI calculator, you're looking for um, the PRB option, which simply means that refers to probability, and you're looking for the exclamation point to do the expansion. Now, if you have a Casio, typically you just have to look for it it's pretty much, you may have to hit your shift or second key to find it, but you're looking for the same exact expression. You're, on the Casio, it may look like that. Okay? So that's how you, that's how you do factorials using a calculator. And that's underlined that, Casio. All right, so let's move into an example. So, so suppose you have 25 people that attend a benefit and you have, you're giving away three gift certificates, one at $100, one at $25, and one at $10. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do 
because I like to write out what I'm doing. So gift certificate one times gift certificate two times gift certificate three. Now, what's important here is assume no person receives more than one prize. Okay, so that's kind of setting us up for factorials. So for this first gift certificate, we've got 25 people. The second gift certificate, gift certificate, there are 24 people available or potential people that can win a prize. And then for that last gift certificate, there are 23 people. All right. So you multiply 25 times 24 times 23, and you end up with 13,000. 800 possible ways to distribute those three gift certificates.